Well, I'm delighted to be here in Dubai at the Shangri-La Hotel with Carlton Crabb uh, from Capital for Life. Uh, Carlton, welcome. Thanks very much, David. Thanks for having me. So, for PCD members not come across you or your business before, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and Capital for Life? Yeah, so Capital for Life uh, helps trustees, uh, private bankers, uh, financial planners and, and wealth managers in general with high net worth life insurance solutions and premium financing. Uh, we're independent in the marketplace. Um, we can put insurance uh, into 200 uh, places globally. Uh, so that's really our role. It's to come alongside um, those uh, other professionals who want our expertise in life insurance and, and how to finance it. So we're emerging from this COVID crisis, if you will. Um, how's that had an impact on, on the life insurance market and also clients' attitudes towards life insurance mm. through this extraordinary period? Yes. I mean, clearly during, uh, during COVID, which hit quite quickly, um, there was a uh, a significant drying up of business. Mm. Obviously, clients couldn't go for medicals, uh, they couldn't go for testing because um, hospitals were, and there was obviously lockdown and, and the hospitals were closed apart from dealing with the, the pandemic that was um, going on. Uh, but since then, uh, there has been a significant up, uh, uptick um, in people uh, interested in life insurance. Mm. There's some data out of America which shows that um, the number of applications are up. Um, and they have been, they had been static for several years in a row. Um, but there's single digit growth uh, again now, certainly in the States. Um, and I'd say that probably around September of last year, there was a COVID, uh, there was a COVID bounce. Mm. People were starting to come back to work. Uh, there was some normality returning in some countries, of course, not all countries and many countries are still going through the pandemic, which mm. we must be mindful of. But uh, once the vaccines have started to be introduced, um, the market started to open up and around September and then October, things really started picking up significantly. I think that people have got a recognition now with that sort of um, those headlines and uh, what was happening around the world. That there is more of a recognition that there is mortality mm. um, and perhaps that they should be doing something uh, about protection or maybe estate planning in some form. Mm. And on the economics of it, the pricing of policies is driven often by interest rates or the global environment. So what do you see in terms of trends of the pricing of cover? Are we in a good value point at the moment in the cycle? Uh, that's a good question. Um, interest rates, obviously, are, uh, you know, they're ultra low at the moment. It has impacted uh, fixed income, um, ultra low yields on that uh, asset class. And of course, that backs the majority of what insurance companies do, um, and that's uh, where they have their funds invested. So that has pushed up the price of whole of life guaranteed insurance uh, mm. in the market. But over the past few years, you've seen a, a large swing towards uh, things like index universal life uh, insurance, which is linked to, let's say, an index or a series of indices like the S&P 500, the Euro stocks 50, uh, the Hang Seng where the insurer effectively offloads some of the responsibility uh, for generating returns. The guarantees are still there up to a certain age, typically. Mm. Uh, but that responsibility is now to the client. That's making cheap premiums much cheaper. Um, but of course, it's interesting for us anyway, as planners, uh, it gives us much more opportunity about what we can do in terms of using those policies, not just for death benefit, but also for retirement planning as well. Mm. And is getting cover for countries around the world, for residents of countries around the world, possible from from Dubai? You've got a unique, you know, vantage point in terms of dealing with many different countries. How do you find that figures? You know, someone from London might not realise the challenges of getting coverage for people in certain parts of the world. How do you how do you um, address some of those challenges? Well, what's great about uh, being in Dubai is obviously we ha we're in the middle of many time zones. Mm. So we have Asia, of course, and then we have Europe um, and then, of course, uh, America. But um, Dubai is perfectly placed in many ways for uh, operating life insurance business. Um, and, and in terms of cover, you're right. Uh, London and the UK market is highly saturated. It's a very developed life insurance market indeed. Premiums are very cheap and it's, it's, it's got a variety of different products. It's a very mm. good quality market. But in the international market, we always will go towards the very high, uh, high financial strength rated insurers, um, typically in the top 10 uh, global insurers uh, in terms of their assets under management, um, you know, trillion dollars plus S&P AA uh, or AA minus rated mm. uh, companies. Um, and when you come into that international market, you've got, I think you've got even more choice. Mm. So Certainly for advisors that we uh, deal with in London uh, and parts of the Channel Islands, um, then we can obviously open up the uh, international life insurance market to them as well. 
and you can get cover where, uh, let's say, a European insurer wouldn't get cover. Um, mm. Last year, we got cover in Pakistan, which is typically more difficult to cover for some of our European counterparts. So that's something in, that London-based professionals shouldn't underestimate, actually. Partnership with yourself or other firms here would can open out new channels that previously would be hard to access. That's right, yes, especially for certain individuals where um, a UK policy is not necessarily the most appropriate mm. or it may not offer the best value. You've got the international insurance um, policies uh, and certainly for the non-domicile uh, and non-resident market, um, that's what we would use as a, as a default. So just looking at the international estate planning arena, I mean, increasingly insurance is used in conjunction with trust and company uh, wealth planning. How do you see that playing out? Are more lawyers and trustees working collaboratively with you in order to find solutions that previously perhaps clients felt they weren't required because the structure actually did the job of a lot of the asset protection? Um, what would you? What, what are you seeing in that space? Yeah. Well, I think um, I think it's slow moving. Um, yeah. Still in some parts. Um, certainly, when we um, speak to the trustees, many of them recognise that there is a liability there. Especially, mm. you will remember this um, when London property then became fully exposed mm. to inheritance tax in the UK um, when uh, the uh, de-enveloping occurred. Of course, you've got ATED and other rules that you could you could use. Um, but certainly, you know, that's that's an area I think we have lots more work to do in with our with our colleagues in the trust world. Uh, but certainly, we're looking to do business at the moment with tax advisors in the UK. Um, mm. We're rolling out a new solution, which is pretty exciting. And we're seeing that life insurance is not just being used as an estate planning tool, mm. but using it also for retirement planning. Mm. Because certainly in the offshore market, these policies have large cash values uh, that can be accessed within certain restrictions. Um, and that can be used for retirement um, as well as estate planning. So mm. this generation... Uh, and also the next generation. And that might be with the end client resident in Europe or here or for the retirement options. I mean, where, where are they most commonly applied with, with insurance solutions, do you find? Uh, they are literally all over the world. Right. Um, so Africa, South America, uh, Europe, um, a couple in Asia um, and other parts, you know, parts of the Middle East as well. So it really is an opportunity for all, you know, anybody taking out an international life insurance policy. How you then structure it, of course, um, in mm. terms of where you are resident as an individual, that's the next most important thing. So once you have the product, you need to make sure that the tax structuring is correct. And that's why I was saying you know, we're working heavily with tax advisors to help to make sure that you know, when the trustees or the bankers, the wealth managers come to us, then the tax advice all sits with that as well. Great. And um, I've been here in Dubai over the last few days. There's a real buzz in the city. The roads are busy. The restaurants are busy. You've been here a few years. I mean, what do you observe of the business environment and buzz uh, that's here right now? Uh, it's one of the leading indicators is it's very, very hard to get a taxi anywhere at the moment. So a bit like the London cabbie, they can always tell when there's a recession because they're normally hit first. Um, we can certainly say that Dubai is buzzing. Mm. Uh, obviously, we have a, the expo here. Mm. That's causing, causing a lot of traffic to come into town. But yeah, my leading indicator is taxis. It's very, very hard to get one. It could be 10 or 15 minutes before you wait. Uh, something uh, is happening here. So for but sure. it's really encouraging, isn't it, for the jurisdiction, for the energy and, and, and the ideas it brings in many sectors and themes, I would say. That's right. Yeah. And it reminds me when I came here, I remember landing in uh, right at the end of 2011 to start my time at a bank here in 2012. I remember the UK and Europe was still suffering. We were just coming out of the financial recession. Mm. Uh, and we landed here in Dubai, and it literally was buzzing, like it is now. Um, and so there is uh, it, it's quite a different vibrancy about it. Um, and so when I'm back in the UK next week, uh, I, I expect it to be much more subdued. Terrific. Well, look, great to chat to you today, uh, Carlton. And we look forward to sharing this with our members. <laughs>